Good morning, everybody. Today we're going to talk about words to avoid. So that the words that we use hold great power. They're vibrations that we're transmitting out into the field around us. And they not only affect our own vibration, but also those of the people around us. For instance, have you ever noticed if somebody is really angry anywhere near you, like even within 30, 40, 50 yards or more, and if they express it verbally, you can feel that vibration. And if that's not close to the vibration you're at, you're probably going to really want to stay away from that person, right? You're going to avoid going anywhere near them. And even if you're not expressing it out loud, people can still feel that type of a vibration. So if you're radiating anger or judgment or shame or insert challenging emotion here, people around you can feel those vibrations and you're going to be either attracted or repelled by them depending on where they're at personally with their vibration. On the contrary, have you ever noticed when somebody is just radiating positive energy? Some people do it like every time you talk to them even. You just feel good when you're around them. It's because they've, they are choosing to emit a vibration. They're choosing to emit a vibration of something along the lines of love or gratitude or joy. Something along those lines. <clears throat> And that type of vibration, if you're in affinity with it, is extremely attractive. It makes you want to be around that person because you feel good when you're around them. So the beautiful thing about this is that this is a choice that we get to make. This is a choice that we get to, get to make every single day. Even in our day-to-day -day interactions, how you interact with a bank teller or a grocery store clerk or somebody you're passing by on the street. You get to give them a little bit of a, uh, a feeling. They get a feeling from interacting with you. And it, it depends on where your vibration is, how you're expressing yourself, the thoughts and the words and the actions that you're choosing to express yourself. So these become really important choices as the days and months and years go by. This becomes our imprint that we have left on the world or that we are leaving in the world. So I want to share this list of six words to avoid, which are disempowering words. And these are words that are going to keep you from going where you want to go, especially if you use them regularly. So number one is I can't. The only time I would recommend using this is if you truly can't or don't want to do something. Like, for instance, I can't eat refined sugar, super processed foods anymore. I used to do that. I can't anymore. <laughs> it's not that I really can't, but like, I don't want to, so I'm choosing that language to, to reflect that desire. So number two is I want. I just used it. <laughs> I'm working on this stuff all the time. And I want is, is a tricky one because we think that's moving us closer to our desires because we're, we're expressing the thing that we desire, right? I want this, I want that. The thing is wanting means not having. If you're saying, I want this, then you're literally saying like, I don't have it or I can't have it. If you're left wanting, it means you're coming up short. So this, this language is actually disempowering, even though we think we are pointing ourselves to what we desire. So number three is, I'm trying. The Yoda said this, try not. Do or do not. There is no try. And he's right. If somebody says, if you ask somebody to do something and they say, well, I'll try, you're like, oh, Great, I better do it myself then. You know, it's a pretty, pretty clear indication that that person is not going to do that thing. And what we get to choose to do in our day-to-day -day life is to 
Avoid using that language for anything that we really intend to do. Let's say I'm trying to do this and I'm trying to do that if you really want to do it. Because your language is disempowering you from the start in that case. Alright, so number four is I hope. Saying I hope, this is another one I catch myself doing a lot because it's like you feel, you feel like you're unsure about the thing. You're not sure if it's going to happen or not, so you're just hoping. You're hoping that it'll happen. But this, again, puts us in a disempowering state of kind of relinquishing control and just, uh, just hoping for good luck. So, in some cases, when something is completely out of your control, yeah, it can make sense to use these words, but not for something that you really intend on making happen. So finally, similarly, the words, I wish. I wish, again, is putting us in this place of like, well, maybe it'll happen, maybe it won't, but I obviously have no control. I wish that would happen, but I'm not going to do anything to make it happen. <laughs> right? So it puts us in a place of, of just hoping and wishing. And this is a disempowered place. So... Finally on this list, it's not exactly a specific word, but a really useful thing is to think about how do you how do you respond when somebody asks how you're doing? This is probably one of the most common questions that we get asked all the time and that we ask people all the time. And yeah, we pretty much give the same old boring response to this every single time. So a cool, interesting way to change your vibration in the day-to-day -day is Come up with some different answers for this and really give the authentic answer of how you're actually doing. It may not be, mm, I'm good, eh, I'm fine, I'm getting by. Like, we can, uh, <laughs> we can change it up a little bit. We're not feeling the same way all the time, so why would we always give the same answer to that question? It's become kind of a meaningless question because people don't really even think about it. It's just like saying hello. <laughs> but even with that, we can choose to emit a certain type of vibration. Like, are you like, are you saying hello with a smile? Are you, are you saying it with, uh, <laughs> with resentment or with, with some type of negative emotion? People can feel all that. And the same with when they ask you how you're doing. They'll know if it's true. Alright, so let's move on to the empowering language. Check out my notes so I get them all right. <laughs> so, I am. Anything that you follow the words I am with, that's what you are creating for yourself. That's the reality that you are choosing to manifest for you and your being. So, anything that you follow the words I am with, choose very carefully. <clears throat> Choose something that you want to experience. I use wanting again. <laughs> Choose something that you will experience. Alright, next up is I have. I have is, is more in the line of, of being instead of wishing. You're owning it when you say I have. Owning that feeling or that creation. So, number three is, I will. This is a good replacement for the I'm trying kind of energy. If you're really choosing to do something, say the words, I will, and you're making a ver verbal commitment and sticking to your word of your desired creation. This one, I'll be honest, is difficult for me because a lot of times what I think I can do in a day <laughs> What I think I want to do is a much longer list than what I actually have time for. So one of my challenges for myself right now is to, is to only verbally commit to doing anything if I truly know that I'm going to do it. I don't say that I want to do it because I think I might want to do it. And that's it's a bad habit that I'm working on changing right now. So following that is I can. Again, it's empowering language saying, I can do that, I will do that. You're empowering yourself to make the thing happen. I love. When you're putting out vibrations of love, you are
putting yourself into that feeling. Even just talking about other things that you love, or experiences that you love, or people that you love, putting yourself into a loving vibration. And this is one of the best places for us to be, to choose to be. And it, it allows us to attract more of that energy to us. I love. I allow myself to. The art of allowing is a really cool concept from Esther and Jerry Hicks. And it's this idea that you don't have to necessarily force it and push so hard to, to, to create a reality that you can enjoy. There's this idea of really just getting into alignment, getting into the flow and allowing the blessings and the beauty to come into your life because life is filled with these blessings and this beauty. So allowing them rather than resisting them is a magical and and more of a resistance free or friction free I should say way of doing manifestation work. Alright, so finally I'm creating. I'm creating. What are you creating? This is a really useful word. Instead of saying, I want, I want a new house, I want a new car, say, I'm creating a new home for myself, a new place to live. I'm allowing myself to find the perfect place to live in harmony with nature, with my friends and my neighbors, live a free, creative life. I'm creating that for myself and allowing it to come into my experience. So this is just an exercise of really paying attention. Paying attention to the words that you use and noticing, are you disempowering yourself with your own speech? Are you actually making it more difficult for yourself to achieve certain things in your life simply by the words that you're using? It's quite possible. And again, with this practice, we want to be easy on ourselves. You know, there's no use in beating yourself up anytime you use one of these disempowering words because it, if you're like me, it, it happens a lot. <laughs> right? It happens all the time. You can just choose to notice, choose to make a change. Even edit it after you say it. So, that's my list. I hope you enjoy this, this practice of exploring your empowering and disempowering speech and noticing the difference. I want to give credit to one of my favorite YouTubers. His name is Quasi, which is Q-U-A-Z-I, Joe here, J-O-H-I-R. And he puts out a lot of inspiring content. He's a really well-spoken, intelligent guy. I appreciate his message a lot. And He's the one who, who brought this attention to me, this, this to my attention most recently. There have been a lot of other teachers who I've heard talking about this as well. And it really helps, it really works. So enjoy and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.